and that we have with the foundation for your help and your support that you have continually poured into the foundation because you're not just pouring into the foundation, you're pouring into different homes of student athletes that will one day become leaders in this country. With a burning passion to see the next generation of student athletes, trailblaze, new horizons in Jamaican sport, we turn our attention now on the Sportsmax Zone to the great Shelly Ann Fraser Price's Pocket Rocket Foundation Scholarship Awards presentation that took place earlier Tuesday at the Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston. Celebrating a decade of operation with at least 26 schools receiving scholarships across 12 sporting disciplines through the foundation, 11 recipients were lauded for excellence in a range of sporting disciplines such as track and field, cricket, volleyball, football, swimming, chess and table tennis. As she always does, the mummy rocket didn't hesitate to share her personal testimonial memories of being a student athlete, just like her many awardees. Earlier, Mrs. Montague said something, you know, about not getting any detention, any suspension. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I have a couple. I had a couple. And... Uh, one of the things I'm grateful for is that every single time Mrs. Montague pulled me in that office or on the veranda, and she spoke life into me. She spoke from a place, from a future place, I would want to say. Because for some of us, we're in a moment, right? And we don't know what the future holds. And I've always said that tomorrow is for winners, right? So she poured from that place, and I'm grateful that she did not give up, you know, her continuous speech, no matter how much I go back to class, and I said, boy, Miss Matthew, you just near my feet a while ago, right? <laughs> no matter how much I would sit in on the, on the block and I would talk, I was grateful because that resonated with me, not just for that moment, but I remembered it. So I want you guys to remember that we are here. We are here to support you. We are here to help you strike the balance. It's not easy, as Gianna said. It's never easy, but it's doable. And we're asking you to try. We're asking you to commit. We're asking you that on days when you feel like you want to give up, on days when you feel like this is difficult, we want you to remember that you are a promise and that we already believe in you. Never shy to share Shelley and Fraser Price, an outstanding human being of the track as well. Well, joining us to discuss her contributions of the track is our in-house track and field analyst, Leighton Levy, who was present at the Pegasus Hotel for the awards. Leighton, what a woman she is and of course, how was today? How did it go for you? Well, it was a lot tighter than last year. Last year's ceremony was a lot longer. Today it was pleasantly short, tight very to the point and of course you know Shelley you know, you know I've been covering her now for 15 years and every year she seems to get better at just delivering these positive messages huh you couldn't help but feel goosebumps today when she was talking to the kids because she's lived it she's not just saying it from a place of being a, a benefactor she's saying it from something that she's experienced herself I know she's giving back to the community and it's always very encouraging to see what she's doing. And, you know, there, it's been significantly beneficial to a lot of the kids who have received scholarships. 73, 73 awardees so far. And look at, for example, Jovian Atkinson from King's, formerly of Kingston College. He's now a pilot. Gianna Lewis, who she alluded to in that, what you just heard a while ago, a piece of audio you heard a while ago. She's a national table tennis representative, you know, and of course I think she was run up our second run up in the national championships earlier this year mm -hmm. and she's done a lot in terms of the sport for her school and for her country so the, the scholarships have benefited so many kids who have then continued to to rise and shine in the way in which they expected because they see the potential and they award these scholarships to these kids and these kids have been delivering right the pocket rocket foundation must be commended but do you think it's even more special when this scholarship is coming from a person like Shelly Ann Fraser Price. Because one of the things growing up, 
even with me because my parents did so much to ensure that I had the best and went to the best school one of the things that I didn't want to do was let them down like I didn't want to do anything that would embarrass them so I would put all that I had into ensuring that I could be the best that I could be because of my parents do you think that these youngsters getting these awards from the one Shelley and Fraser Prize they are motivated instantly that they can't let her down yeah and look she's a role model in many ways huh? and but one of the things that she said today that was instructed is that she explained to these awardees that the reason why she's doing this is because when she was going to school when she was going to Woolmers for example she didn't have the means but so many people poured into her which is why she was able to achieve the success that she has over the last 15 16 years as a professional and that's why she's giving back so they know her story her story has been in she has a book out that came out a couple of years ago that tells her story she tells that story often enough and all of these kids who aspire to be like her know that story so when they're getting a scholarship from her foundation they have a they are high bar to live up to and they ensure and we've seen it over the years a lot of them most of them if not all have lived up to those expectations because they've gone on and thrived there's a young man who I think he works with, um, I'm trying to remember who he works with. No, but he was a scholarship recipient. He went to Campion High School. Mm -hmm. He's from, I mean, a lot of people have this impression that Campion is a uptown school. Mm -hmm. But he came from very humble beginnings. Yes. But he's gotten a bachelor's degree. I think he works with the Scientific Research Council. Somewhere, I'm trying to remember exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. But they've all gone on to make their own marks within the society, which is what she wants to see. Because as she mentioned today in, the, in her um, preamble to the, to the kids, is that investing in these kids is not is not just a scholarship it's an investment in ensuring that Jamaica becomes a better country because of them and not in spite of them yeah and as you would imagine Shalyan made room to field some questions about her health and recovery as she prepares for the 2024 Paris Olympics Without a doubt, you know, it's athletics. Injuries happen. I've been blessed to have had not many throughout my career, which is good. And I think that's what I'm really just relying on in the fact that, you know, I've been relatively good in terms of health. Apart from my knee and um, whatever else is happening, I've been good. So for me, um, I'm just looking forward to just getting healthy, 100% fit. And sometimes it won't be 100%, but 90 is good enough for me. When asked about how competitive the female sprinting field is heading into the Olympics, Fraser Price says she's not getting complacent. Um, I would like to say the depth of the sprinting has always been there for female sprinting. There's always a host of different athletes that are coming and preparing. You know, for me, I think the focus is just staying focused on your own lane and what you need to do to get to the top. As far as I'm concerned, having competition is good. You know, it pushes you, it gets you or makes you aware that you can't just go to practice and just show up and think, okay, that's enough. You have to work and you have to be committed to that work. You have to be willing to go the extra mile. So for me, I don't think about the depth really. I just know that it's always been there. It's not going to change. That's what it is. It's the Olympics. Everybody wants to win an Olympic medal. So for me, I don't want to spend my time focusing on what others are doing, but instead I invest the time and the effort in my own craft and make sure that when the Olympic comes around, I'll be ready to, to face whatever. Yeah, my takeaway from that is I'm staying focused on my own lane and she's always been so focused. That's the reason she has achieved the numerous success that she has. Yeah, look, in, in, in 15 years of international competition in an individual capacity, Shelly and Fraser Price has failed to hit the podium only once. Seven world championships, four Olympic Games. And 2011 when she was ill and of course she had her issues going into the world championships in Daegu. That's the only time she hasn't won a medal. So she knows what it takes. And, and this was response to a question that next year is going to be a year in which you have Elaine Thompson here who is getting back to her best. Shakira Richards has run 10-6. Um, Sharika Jackson has run 10-6. She's never had to face three women who have run 10-6 before, her, mm -hmm. she, she being the fourth. But one of the things that you do know about Shelly and Fraser Price is the fact that she does not fear failure. She does not fear competition. And if she believes that she can go into Paris next year and possibly win a, f a third Olympic 100 meter gold medal, who am I to doubt her? I think she knows what is going to be required. She felt that experience in Budapest in August. And I think she, 
And once she gets healthy, and once she learns how to manage that knee issue that is not going to go away, I think she'll be ready. And if she loses, it's going to take an extraordinary effort to beat mm. her. She'll be 37 years old in December, Leighton, and um, not many athletes are still potent at that age. Merlin Naughty, of course, mm. an exception. I think when Merlin was 37, she was running 1083, which at that time was one of the fastest <laughs> times in the world. So um, it is... It, there is precedence for a 37-year-old athlete to be still top of the world. But you, you, you get the feeling that based on the current climate of women sprinting, um, Shelian has a really, really tough job here in 2024 to, to topple a women's sprint field that at the moment is... I would think better than it has ever been. It's faster than it's ever been, certainly. Yes, yes. And when you look at the, the depth of talent, which is what she alluded to as well, because Marie Jose Talou was run 1072 this year, and she came fourth, right? You know, you're looking at Dina Asher Smith, you're looking at so many young sprinters, Tamari Davis from the United States, you're looking at a bunch of youngsters from Jamaica, Julian Alfred from St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. All of these young women are running fast. So the likelihood of her facing possibly the fastest field to ever assemble a women's final is what she'll be facing in Paris next year. But as we've seen in previous years, um, Sheldon Fraser Price, as, as I mentioned earlier, has only failed to hit the podium once in 15 years of international competition, mm -hmm. seven world championships, four Olympic games. Mm -hmm. And I think, I believe, honestly believe that if she felt like she didn't have a chance of getting on the podium she in would Paris, quit she would probably decide to walk away because she had nothing else to prove. Yes. And I think if she believes that she can, as I said before, who am I to doubt her? You know? mm. Correct. A tremendous human being, Shelly Ann Fraser-Price and her Pocket Rocket Foundation is a, a staple now. And great to see that she's contributing to not only students from her school, but schools right across the board and different sports, as we had said, not just track and field the whole gamut of, of sporting competition she is contributing to. So um, more power to Shelley and Fraser Price. Absolutely. And I mean, each time I see her and I get a chance to speak with her, my level of respect grows even more because she doesn't have to do this, you know, but she gives back. She's committed to being a nation builder. And what we've seen from the competition, the Six Society competition that she's launching next, well, this Saturday, actually, where She's bringing communities together. You know, she has the banquet that's coming up on November 4th to raise funds for the foundation because she wants to do even more yes. for the foundation. It's 350 US dollars for a ticket, so if you can afford it, please try to support it. But the reality is that what she's doing is not just for now. She's building towards the future to do even more. And that's, you know, that's so commendable because not everybody is able to do that and do that with any level of consistency. She's proven that she's consistent on the track and even more so off it. Yeah, uh, who were some of the people that were present today as we get ready to wrap? Um, primarily there were the, 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 the recipients and their parents, mm -hmm. um, a few members of the media like myself, and um, members of the foundation's board, including uh, Ms. Mrs. Colleen Montague, principal of Wilma's Girls, okay. and um, of course Sherry Ranston, her communications um, person. But it was primarily the kids. And of course, how can I forget um, Mr. H Hendrickson from um, National Bakery, who, of course, they donated one million Jamaican dollars, just about 6,000 US to the foundation, mm -hmm. which will go towards offering even more scholarships mm -hmm. in the year to come. And I guess the, the students were really thankful, oh, the, they the were. reaction from them. They were. And when you, mm -hmm. when you think about some of the athletes who were there, mm -hmm. Natrice East, as you know, she won class three champs last year. She was a recipient. And she, of course, she was, I think she was second, third in the character games yes. in the 100 meters. And a young man who she, she alluded to today from Jamaica College who says, as you know, she trains at the, the, the base, the Ashenheim Stadium. Yeah. And she says every time I, when he finishes training, he wants to race her. He's an 800-meter runner. <laughs> and she brought that out today, which, you know, brought out deals of mm -hmm. laughter from the audience. You know, yeah. his name is Tyrone Lawson. And um, so, you know, the kids really appreciate this. And, of course, they look up to her. Yeah. She's an example for them to follow. And um, that she's doing so much for them, you know, is, it certainly goes over well with, mm -hmm. with her, both the kids and their parents. Because... Yeah. As you know, education isn't cheap, and um, you know these scholarships—they get, they get tablets, they get um, a book grant, they get two thousand 
Yes. $3,000 from Digicel in terms of credit. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the money goes toward tuition and all, all of that, all the things that they need to go to school. Yeah, well, Leighton, as usual, a pleasure chatting with you. Always um, a pleasure being here. What's happening with Ricardo, though? Oh, we'll talk about that after. <laughs> Our producer says we got to go. Break time. <laughs>